Hey guys, just got back from Texas fishing. Boy, it was a tough trip for me. Um, storms, high winds. Uh, it, we even had to go, we didn't even go to Lake Fork the last two days. That's how, uh, Lake Fork's almost nine foot low. Um, really rough. The waves were huge. I think I put a video up that was really, uh, just, it, it really didn't do justice how big the waves were and how rough that ride was. And it made it very tough to fish. A lot of the areas that that we were fishing back in June and July, even those areas are, are dry now. It, it's really amazing uh, how much of that lake is, is dry. And it doesn't show any signs of improving. I mean, Dallas is sucking the water out of it right now. So we went to a couple other lakes. We went to a lake called Bob Sandlin. Um, never been there. It was at the uh, it was at the uh, advice of a couple guides, um, Billy Lawson and uh, Cody Mace. Um, which those two guys they they uh, <clears throat> they did a seminar we attended at the Lake Fort Marina, and you'll hear my loud mouth in there a few times. But uh, they did a great seminar and talked about a lot. So they kind of guided us toward Bob Sandlin. And we went over there and had an absolute monster day. We didn't catch any giants, but we caught so many fish. It was so much fun. Um, man, it was a lot of fun. It, 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 we, they were really on an Alabama rig. Uh, it, we had a blast. Uh, and then we went to another lake the last day, Lake Hawkins, because the storm was rolling in again. Um, so we wanted to be kind of close that we could get out, not a huge lake not get the crap beat out of a skin and it was filled with hydrilla so i wanted to take a time a moment and put some videos up to show you how i fish and this time of year is alabama rig time jerk bait time it's any of the shad imitating bait times how i use my live scope not as much to see the fish but to be able to accurately fish the tops and the slope of that grass as it comes out into deeper water. Now there's always an edge and that's what they tell you to find, but sometimes it's very, very hard to find that edge. But with live scope, you're able to use that edge. But what I was doing was throwing the live, throwing the Alabama rig up shallow and then working it, stair stepping it down uh, and using it to stay just at the tip top of that edge. Cause if you know anything about high drill, if you get it, if you touch it to your bait, it is a ball of mess. So it, it's, there's only a few different baits that you can accurately fish and you know spinner baits require you to slow weight down and the alabama rig you can control that depth so beautifully using the live scope so let's take a look right now all right this is standing hydrilla and i mean it's growing out to 13 14 15 feet i mean very very deep so what you do is you back off with your live scope and you'll see where I back off here and start to get into a little bit deeper water. Now what I'm doing is I'm looking for where it's starting to shorten up and starting to get where it's getting a lot more sparse because that's where I believe the fish will be located. Now as I'm starting to do that, now what you can do is when you take your, uh, for example in this one, whether it be a jerk bait or whether it be an A-rig, spinner bait, crank bait, you know, whatever bait you choose that you think is best for the situation. You see how I'm throwing it, and I'm I'm just using it, and I'm working it slowly atop, across the top of the edge of this. Uh, using your live scope, you're able to take your bait, cast it out. There it is. I'm casting it out, and and I'll work it right down along the tip tops. Now, see, watch me, watch and notice how I'm right on the edge here, and I'm working it, and I even drop it down a little bit right here, and I'm just keeping it just barely skimming the top of it. And there was an actual fish right there. Look at that fish come up. Beautiful. That was a big fish. I, I'm pretty sure that's not a bass because that would have been a five-foot-long bass. But it just goes to show you there's other ways to use your live scope uh, more effect. You don't always have to see the fish. It's it's wonderful tool for using and being able to work your bait and work it perfectly and be more efficient. Because being efficient with the bait, there we go right there. See, I'm being real efficient. I'm working along the edge, and those big fish, they just they was giants. All right, guys. I think that that right there will help you understand that sometimes you don't have to see the fish. It's not all the way about always about seeing the fish. A lot of times it's about using the live scope to get an accurate uh, 
contour or layout of the underwater area with the grass and things like that and yes by the end of the week I'm hoping to put up one of the new videos um, but I had some things that I shot at Texas that I really wanted to show y'all like yesterday was the sunken boat I thought that was a really cool shot I took it at four different angles just to show you that sometimes they you know at different angles they it doesn't it doesn't even have the shape of a boat it didn't even look like a boat in one of the angles um, and that's why I've always said that you need to go at things at different angles when you're side imaging and down, uh, or I say side view and down view, um, or I think it's even clear view now, uh, using those, those tools to be able to get uh, better information and, and, and to see the best picture available. But let's tell you, you know, I'm glad you're here and I hope that you'll like the new style videos as we get, uh, get them up guys thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and to all my wonderful viewers and subscribers you know ring the bell